Welcome to our lecture online. So what are the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit? Well, by definition, we can read what we have on the board. It says that the upper confidence limit, limit and the lower confidence limit are the boundaries of the confidence interval of the mean of the population. Wow, what does that even mean? You read that sentence and you kind of get lost in, well, I don't quite know what I just read. So let's try to center ourselves, focus ourselves on what we're talking about here. So let's go back to what we talked about in the previous video, where we showed you how to find the maximum error of estimate. And to find the maximum error of estimate, well, we take the z-score at the half confidence level and multiply it times the standard error. Now the standard error is simply the standard deviation of the sample which in other words is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the, the sample size, the square root of the sample size. Now we'll show you in just a moment how to do that. So now let's go back and also read what's at the top. It says we're given the population standard deviation, the confidence interval or the level of significance, and the sample size. So those go into this calculation right here. Obviously you have to have what we call the, the level of significance, we have to have the standard error, which essentially is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. And also, of course, we need, we're going to need the sample mean, the average of the sample. Now, let's take a look at our drawing here and see if we can make some sense out of it. So here we take a sample. We have a sample mean or the average of the sample. And then we have what we call the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit. Notice that those are essentially the boundaries of these regions right here, which are defined by the level of significance. And it's ultimately what we're trying to do here is gain some information about the population. How confident are we when we take a sample that the mean of the population falls within this region. Now this region again is called a confidence interval. So essentially what we're trying to find is, we're trying to find our confidence, the confidence level, the level of confidence, however you want to say it, that the population mean will fall within these two limits, the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit. And that's essentially what those two things are. They define the boundary of the region where we expect the population to be with a certain level of confidence. The greater the level of confidence, the wider this will become. The smaller level of confidence, the skinnier this will become. Hmm. So we have a greater level of confidence that simply pushes these limits out and we can expect a greater range of where we're going to try to find the mean of the population. That makes sense. If we have a small level of confidence, then of course we could say that's going to fall within a small region, but if we have a large level of confidence, then we can find it in a larger region. So that makes sense, of course, when you think about it. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take an example where we're going to set the confidence interval at 0.95 or 95%, which gives us a level of significance of 5%. We divide that by two because we have a two-tailed example here. So we have 2.5% on one side, 2.5% on the other side. We're given the sample mean, we're given the sample size, and we're given the standard deviation of the population. Remember that in this chapter, we're going to assume that we know the standard deviation of the population. In future chapters, we're not going to assume that and show you how to calculate. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate what we call the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit. That is going to be some deviation away from the mean of the sample. And what we need to do then is we need to calculate this value right here. And remember, if you look at that, that's the same as what we have over here, which is known as the maximum error of estimate. So let's calculate that error of estimate. So the error of estimate is equal to the z-score at the half level of significance multiplied times the standard error, which essentially is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. Now, of course, we have to go look on the table to find the z-score of the half level of significance. And of course, when I'm teaching this class, I'm never far away from my, my table. So we look up 2.5%. 
Two and a half percent. Where is that? On the table right here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Two and a half. So I'm looking for 475. And 475 falls right there, which is 196. All right. So that gives us a value of 1.96. That's the Z-score of two and a half percent. And that we multiply times the standard deviation of the population, which is given, divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 100. The square root of 100 is 10. And I need a calculator right here, also never far away, teach when we're teaching statistics. So we take 6 divided by 10, which is 0.6, multiply times 1.96, and we get 1.176. So we're going to add that to the mean of the of the sample to get the upper confidence limit and then we're going to subtract it from the mean of the sample to get the lower confidence limit so the upper confidence limit is equal to the mean of the sample plus the maximum error and that's going to be equal to the mean of the sample plus and then we go ahead and write this as z at the half level of significance, multiply times the sigma, that's a kind of a small sigma, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. And so we calculated that to be, well, the, where do we go? Here we go, we have 10.22 for the mean of the sample plus 1.18. We'll go ahead and round it off to two decimal places. And so we can say that this is therefore going to be equal to 11.40 of the upper confidence limit. And then we calculate the lower confidence limit, which is equal to the mean of the sample minus the error, the maximum error, which is going to be the z-score at the half level of significance times the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size, which is equal to 10.22 minus 1.18, which is going to be equal to 9.04. All right, so now we have the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit, which are the boundaries of the mean of the population, where we expect the mean of the population to fall with a certain level of confidence. So we can then say that the, that the, um, the mean of the population, the average of the population will fall somewhere between 9.04 and 11.40 with a confidence level of 0.95 a 95 percent confidence level that the mean or the average of the population will fall somewhere between the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit and that's what we mean by the confidence limits on the upper and lower side that's how we define it and that's how we calculate it that is how it's done